The once great city of Detroit, Michigan has brought us some awesome things. Robocop, Motown music, American muscle, and the one true American sports car. Like many of these, there are modern incarnations, but if you want to see something truly cool, you have to have a look at the originals. While stationed in Europe during the Second World War, a lot of American servicemen developed a taste for the smaller, more agile sports cars that were popular over here. When they returned home after the war, some of them even imported a few back into the US. Soon, MGs, Jags and Alphas started showing up on American roads and developed a dedicated following amongst US car lovers. At the time, there were no equivalents being produced for the US domestic market to rival them, so Harley Earl, head of design for GM, convinced General Motors to let him build a concept that would become a homegrown rival to these European imports. He put together a two-seater sports car concept under the name of Project Opal and showed it off at the 1953 New York Auto Show at the Waldorf Astoria. That car was given the name that would come to represent a true American sports car, a name which lives on to this day the Corvette. concept, which then formed the basis of the second generation of the Corvette which went into production. The name for that concept and the subsequent name for the car itself was the Stingray. The design of this car is radically different to the first generation and the true origin of the look that lasted until the current seventh generation Corvette. Almost all of the rounded edges have been smoothed out and what's left is a sharp, chiseled look. Now this particular one is the 327, which, if you don't speak American cubic inches, means 5.4 litres. That's 5.4 litres of Detroit small block V8 kicking out 350 brake horsepower. And believe it or not, that is the smallest engine this car was offered with. The engine variants went all the way up to a 7 litre big block V8. Exhaust note is fantastic. The side exhausts are right by my head, just outside the door. It's crazy to think that the sound this car is kicking out comes from the smallest engine that was offered on the C2 Corvette, but it sounds like Thor blowing his nose. <laughs> Revving this thing at traffic lights causes heads to turn for a mile around. The Corvette was originally produced in Flint, Michigan, a city so closely linked to the car industry it seemed almost impossible to imagine it without it. More importantly though, back then they truly knew how to put a car together. When this car first came out, critics praised its handling and design and they weren't wrong. At 47 years old, this car is still handling remarkably well. I've driven cars of this age and similar that have only had a fraction of their performance left and certainly a lot of the handling has been washed away over time but this car still drives immensely well. We've borrowed this car from the Classic Car Club in London and they've done a brilliant job of maintaining it and keeping it road worthy and this is still a lot of fun to drive. Even the steering wheel made driving this car an occasion. Modern performance car steering wheels are small and thick and really good at their job, but there's just something about these old thin wheels that will crush your skull in an accident like a raw egg hitting a metal railing. It just feels so good. 
Okay, the ref counter didn't work, and the brakes either did very little or fully locked up the wheels depending on their mood, and the handbrake was pretty much just for show, but that's what driving these classic cars is all about. You don't get a fraction of the character from modern cars. You get speed and precision, comfort, and even safety, but everything you gain you lose in adventure, thrill, and, yeah, swagger. The C2, second generation, is my personal favourite. Arguably, the coupe version of the C2 is the better looking of the two. But when the sun is out and summer is here, you would want to have the convertible. Unfortunately, the sun isn't out and summer isn't here. But I'm not putting the top up for anyone. There's something else about the Corvette, and this generation in particular, that makes them extra special. Something that cements them as one of the greatest rides ever. And that can be traced back to a man by the name of Alan Shepard, the first American to go into space. He was a huge Corvette fan. And in 1959, when he arrived for training for what would become his first flight into space in 1961, he arrived in his C1 Corvette. After he came back from his first space flight, GM gave him as a present a brand new Corvette with a special bespoke high-tech space age interior. And that kicked off a relationship between the NASA astronauts and Corvettes that would last over a decade. Alan Shepard, the first American in space, and Gus Grissom, the second American man in space, were particularly fond of their Corvettes and were notorious for racing them. These were men that had traveled at tens of thousands of miles an hour, gone to the very fringes of what human bodies can take and traveled further than any human had ever been. They were the smartest, the bravest, and hands down the coolest people on the planet. And when they weren't flying around the earth, up there in space, they drove Corvettes. And if that doesn't make this the coolest car on the planet, I'm not sure what does. <laughs> Anything that's been worrying you or bringing you down fades away the moment you get behind the wheel of this car and is replaced by a cacophonous thunder in your ears and a smile on your face. No matter where you're actually driving this car, in your mind, you're tearing around a winding mountain trail, cruising past a sun-drenched beach or speeding towards the horizon on a dead straight desert road. The first generation Corvette was in production for over 10 years and it evolved quite a bit over that time. A lot of the ornamental touches got left behind, the fins and such. When this car came out though, it was a real leap forward sleeker, sharper, more aggressive. It left behind the, the safe enthusiasm of the 1950s and stepped into the effortlessly cool 60s. The design only lasted until 1967, where after the C3 Corvette came in. Still heart-stoppingly beautiful, but it already began to show signs of where the brand was going. Corvettes these days are well, let's face it, they're not that attractive, especially not when you put it next to one of its ancestors. Today, the seventh generation Corvette, for which the Stingray name has been resurrected, is a brutal looking machine that will undoubtedly put a smile on your face when you hit the gold pedal, but just doesn't stir the soul like the first three generations could. Cars like this represent the absolute pinnacle in car production out of Michigan. As time has gone on and styles have changed and safety regulations have come in, cars like the Mustang and the Camaro and indeed the Corvette just haven't had a patch on their 1960s counterparts. If you ever feel like you're not getting a real driving experience from modern cars and you're getting bugged driving up and down the same old strip, try everything you can to get behind the wheel of one of these. It's never been beat.